velocity profiles. There are mathematical relationships between position, velocity, and acceleration. In fact, they are related by integrals and derivatives with respect to time. Think about a particular point in time as the car moves along an la axis labeled R. The rate of change, or the derivative with respect to time of the object's position, is just the slope of the position curve. Taking the ratio of the height and length changes of the slope gives the velocity for that particular point in time. So that particular time has a velocity equal to the slope on the position graph. This combination of time and slope define a point on the graph of velocity versus time. Notice that the velocity graph is a straight line. This is due to the constant acceleration chosen for this illustration. Velocity is to acceleration as position is to velocity. In other words, the slope of the velocity versus time curve is equal to the acceleration. Since the velocity curve has only one slope, the acceleration is a constant value over time. Conversely, velocity is the integral of acceleration, and position is the integral of velocity. These equations show the integral and derivative relationships between vol position, velocity, and acceleration. Here are position, velocity, and acceleration graphs for an object moving along an axis. Notice that the acceleration graph has steady values of acceleration as time advances. It has 4, 0, negative 2, 4 again, and finally 0 meters per second squared levels of acceleration as time advances. Since the change in velocity is the integral of acceleration, determining the area beneath the acceleration graph will yield the change in velocity. For example, the first segment from 0 to 4 seconds has acceleration 4 meters per second squared. This is a simple rectangle, so integration, or computing the area under the segment, is simple. 4 seconds of width multiplied by 4 meters per second squared of height equals 16 meters per second of area. Thus, the velocity of the object increases by 16 meters per second during the first 4 seconds. Since the velocity of the object began at 0 meters per second, the velocity at 4 seconds must be 16 meters per second. The acceleration is zero for the next segment, meaning that the velocity does not change during this time. Position, labeled distance, is related to velocity as velocity is related to acceleration. Position change is the integral of velocity. When the velocity does not change, as during the second segment, the position changes at a constant rate, yielding a straight line with respect to time. But notice during the first segment, since the velocity is a linear line, the integral of that line is a second order curve, which is a parabola. Pause at this point and consider the relationships between the three variables for the remainder of the time axis. All three curves, position, velocity, and acceleration, can be superimposed onto one vertical axis. This makes it easier to see how the graphs relate in time. When designing the motion of a single robot axis, the goal is to move the axis from one position to another. Therefore, the initial and final positions are known, but the velocity and acceleration profiles during the movement are undefined, and many solutions are possible. One of the simplest strategies is to accelerate the motor, driving the axis at its maximum acceleration until it reaches its maximum velocity, then run the motor at constant velocity to a very carefully specified point so that the deceleration can occur and land the axis at the target position at the very same time, all the velocity is decelerated away and the axis stops at the target position. This strategy results in the so-called trapezoidal profile. However, there is a problem. Did you notice that velocity and acceleration are just the first and second derivatives respectively of position? There are further derivatives of position as well. The next derivative after acceleration is jerk, and the next few in order are called snap, crackle, and pop but we are only interested in jerk for our purposes. Look at the slope of the acceleration curve. At the beginning, it is almost a vertical line. This very large slope indicates that the jerk is very high when the acceleration changes rapidly. The jerk is a primary factor causing oscillation during the beginning and end of movement along an axis. If the slope of the acceleration is reduced from being a vertical line, the jerk of the motion becomes finite. This results in a velocity curve without sharp bends in the corners and is called an S velocity profile. So now there is positive jerk at the beginning of the acceleration and negative jerk at the end of the acceleration. 
There is negative jerk at the beginning of the deceleration and positive jerk at the end of the deceleration. The key difference from the trapezoidal profile is that these jerks are not infinite or very large. The magnitude of the curves can vary depending on each curve's vertical axis scale, but the general shapes of the curves are distinctive to the S-profile approach. Given the maximum acceleration and velocity of an axis, we need equations that will allow us to enter a time and get out the proper position for that time in order to follow an S-profile, tra trapezoidal profile, or any profile we wish to design and use. I began deriving equations for the various curve segments for the S-profile. There are seven segments to consider. Acceleration ramp up, constant acceleration, acceleration ramp down, constant velocity movement, deceleration ramp up, constant deceleration, and finally, deceleration ramp down. However, there is an old adage that says a week in the lab can save four hours in the library, and it applies here. After a brief search, I found a paper on velocity profiles that not only had equations for trapezoidal and S profiles, but also had equations for a velocity profile based on sinusoids. The only thing really needed to make smooth movements is rounding of the change corners in order to control the magnitude of higher derivatives. The nice thing about basing the changes on a cosine function is that the higher order derivatives are all sines and cosines themselves, which inherently limit the magnitude of those derivatives based on the frequency of the changes. The paper included generic figures of the position and velocity of an axis versus time. The so-called throw is the distance that must be traveled by the axis in order to move from its current position to the desired position, and capital T sub lower script T is the total time for the movement. An assumption in this paper is that the acceler acceleration and deceleration magnitudes are equal. Another assumption built into this method is that it is required to move from the current to the desired position as quickly as possible. The time required, therefore, depends only on the maximum acceleration and velocity achievable by the axis. Note that it is entirely possible that the throw will be so short and the ratio of maximum acceleration to maximum velocity so low that the axis will never reach maximum speed during the movement. In this case, the velocity profile has a point at the top rather than a straight line because the axis never reaches full speed before it must begin deceleration. Some parameters must be computed before the profile can be generated. Note that the equations are broken into three portions, those useful to both velocity profile designs on the left those applicable to the trapezoidal profile in the middle, and those applicable to the sinusoidal profile on the right. The first equation simply determines the direction of the desired motion, either positive or negative. The next equation determines the distance of the move and calls it y sub f. The center distance is computed as y sub s, and the time to reach the center position is called t sub s. The position and time at the end of the acceleration phase are called y sub a and t sub a respectively. They are computed based on whether a trapezoid or sinusoidal velocity profile is desired. The maximum velocity achieved is computed based on the desired velocity profile, but it also depends on whether the axis maximum velocity will be achieved during the movement. The total time required for the movement is computed as t sub t. Finally, other useful parameters are computed and vary a bit between the two profile designs. Finally, the equation for all segments of the position profile versus time can be used to compute the full position profile. The equations for all segments of the velocity profile versus time can also be used to compute the full velocity profile. And lastly, the equations for all segments of the acceleration profile versus time can be used to compute the full acceleration profile. Since all the profiles are symmetrical, notice that the last equation for position, velocity, and acceleration for the final half of the movement are just mirrors of the first half. There is one extra equation set here because the equations for this motion segment were accidentally omitted from the original paper. The equations for a sinusoidal motion are actually fewer than those for a trapezoidal one and require a bit less computation time. They consist of equations for position versus time, velocity versus time, and finally acceleration versus time. All of these equations have been programmed into Excel and the spreadsheet made available. However, you must determine the maximum velocity and acceleration of your axis as well as the units you desire to use. 
Inches and seconds have been used for illustration purposes, but you may decide to use encoder counts for position and microseconds of time, for example. Also, this spreadsheet generates position, velocity, and acceleration based on discrete points in time. The position points are the most important result from the spreadsheet since they give the desired positions versus time. But if these position commands are followed, the motion will have the desired velocity profile as well as acceleration and jerk properties. You must determine an appropriate length of time or step time between each point and input those times manually in the column labeled time. There is a setting in cell B4 labeled with the Greek character gamma. This parameter allows the spreadsheet to move smoothly between trapezoidal and S profiles. When it is set to 1, the resulting profile will minimize the acceleration slope, or in other words, minimize jerk. This graph shows the position, velocity, and acceleration curves for gamma equal to 1, which accomplishes the move in the minimum time given the constraint to apply minimum jerk and reach maximum acceleration and velocity. This is the motion profile with higher jerk since gamma is set to 1 half. Notice that the total move requires less time than when jerk was minimized. Finally, the trapezoidal profile, wherein gamma is equal to zero, provides theoretically infinite jerk, but accomplishes the move in the minimum amount of time. Another sheet is included, which generates cosine motion profiles. Similar data and decisions must be measured or made and entered. But notice there is no gamma parameter, since this motion profile is not closely related to the trapezoidal profile. The resulting motion profile is quite smooth and requires the same amount of time to accomplish the movement as the S profile with minimum jerk. 